Joining us now, State Department spokesman Matt Miller. Matt, thanks for joining us this morning. And let's start right away. What is the latest that we know about the number of Americans who may have been killed in Israel? Uh, we can confirm that there are nine American citizens who have lost their lives uh, as a result of these horrific attacks. Uh, we obviously extend our condolences. Our thoughts are with the victims and their families. We have been offering consular assistance to uh, to the families of those uh, lost Americans and consulting closely with the uh, government of Israel, and we'll continue to do so. And Matt, beyond those nine and a deeply tragic number, are there reports of other Americans who are missing? or perhaps being held hostage. There are reports of Americans who are unaccounted for. Uh, we continue to work to confirm that number and to, to try to locate those who are missing. Uh, we don't have, have solid information about either the number or where they might be. Uh, we'll continue to work through that with the government of Israel as they continue to take back uh, towns in, in southern Israel that were attacked by Gaza. I'm sorry, that were attacked by Hamas. And, 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 and Matt, we heard from the president over the weekend uh, offering support to Israel in the strongest of terms. Can you give us an update as to what exactly that means in terms of financial, <clears throat> military, or security assistance? Sure. In the immediate aftermath of these attacks, the president ordered his national security team to get in, to, to remain in close touch with their Israeli counterparts and to ensure that they have everything that they need to respond to this terrorist attack uh, in the most, most forth, forceful way possible. The Secretary of State has been in close contact with his uh, counterparts in the government of Israel. The Secretary of Defense has been in close contact with his counterparts. And you've seen the first military shipments start to move yesterday. Those will arrive in the region, uh, will arrive in Israel in the coming days. That includes munitions. In addition, the secretary has been uh, in touch with foreign counterparts in the region to ensure that everyone makes clear that this horrific terrorist attack was unacceptable and that uh, everyone who has any influence needs to ensure that the uh, 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 that uh, that Hamas releases all any and all hostages immediately uh, and, and take steps to ensure that the conflict does not widen in terms of Hezbollah or other groups, other enemies or potential enemies of Israel seeking to take advantage of this uh, conflict. And Matt, we played earlier in the show, the Secretary of State was on Meet the Press yesterday and mused that a possible motivation for these attacks over the weekend for this bloodshed was to prevent this normalization between Israel and Saudi Arabia that's been in the works for a while now, you know, certainly not complete just yet. We've heard cautious optimism from both sides in recent weeks. Now, of course, now dealing with the after effects, the aftermath of this violence. Could you expand a little bit upon what he meant, what signs you guys are picking up on that, that suggest that, that was indeed a motivation for what happened? Well, I won't speak to what the motivations of, of Hamas might have been. Obviously, they have conducted terrorist attacks against Israel for years. It's why the United States has held Hamas accountable. It's why the United States has held uh, Hamas's financial backers, including Iran, accountable for the, the attacks that they have launched. Um, but it has been clear that Hamas is opposed to normalization between Israel, uh, normalization of relations between Israel and countries in the region. It is clear that Iran uh, is opposed to normalization between Israel and others in the region. And as the secretary made clear, uh, in his appearance on, on Meet the Press yesterday, uh, there are really two paths for the region to take. One is a path of increased stability, of increased relationships between Israel and its neighbors, and the other is a, a, the, the path of conflict, of terrorism, of death and destruction. That is the path that Hamas and other terrorist organizations offer, and it is one that we are deeply opposed to and that we are, deep, that we are, are trying to prevent, and it's why we will continue to work to, to advance relationships between Israel and its partners in the region.